Uh, is there a question? I I would like to ask something. Yeah. Could you go back a few slides to uh, where you were yeah. the bond lengths? Yeah. So can you? Uh, I don't really pay attention to the chat window. Can you just go ahead and ask? Uh, so what I was asking was, these are canonical bond lengths for specific bonds, right? Such as a carbon oxygen double bond for, or the carbon nitrogen bond. Yes. But uh, you uh, said earlier that there are there is a bit of resonance, there is a bit of delocalization in the uh, amino acids. So wouldn't these be more indicated than accurate? No. So. Uh... All the lengths will be close for covalent bonds. The lengths will be very close to the canonical lengths. Okay. There's no reason for them to behave differently. The chemistry of the of a polypeptide is just chemistry. There's nothing particularly special about it. The speciality okay. is coming from the order of atoms which are covalently connected together. So, uh, what is the difference between these angles and the dihedral angles? So, the dihedral angle, as I've told you, is Basically, an angle defined by four atoms. And these angles are defined by three atoms. Yeah. So, uh, there's a difference between a dihedral angle defined with four atoms and a normal angle which is defined by three atoms. So, the angles over here are uh, angles defined by three atoms. The phi psi is important for proteins because by defining these phi psi angles, we can literally Assuming that the uh, that the omega is at 180 degrees, which it always is, more or less, with very few exceptions, we can define the position of any atom in space by just knowing phi and psi. So that is why these phi psi angles are so important. And by definition, phi psi angles are defined by four atoms, and these four atoms have to be main chain atoms. We don't use side chain atoms for defining phi and psi. Okay, so thank you, uh, sir. So if the uh, Ramachandra and map for glycine was uh, different from what we had already seen. Then, uh, when scientists discovered this uh, Ramachandra and map, how do they know that it is um, just an exception and not a wrong assumption? No. So you have to understand that the Ramachandra and map initially was was a way to plot a three dimensional structure in two dimensions, right? And uh, first plots came from models. Then the first crystal structures were solved. And let's say you had 10 crystal structures. First 10 crystal structures, let's say you plot on a Ramachandran map. You, you get about um, a few thousand dots uh, on the Ramachandran map and you realize that they are all clustered together. They are not evenly distributed all across conformational space. And you also realize through Ramachandran's work uh, that when you build a model of uh, uh, let's say a, a, a peptide with 10 amino acids and you take this physical structural model and you realize that omega is fixed. So the CONH bond is a flat plane and it cannot really vary. So the only way you can rotate the main chain is phi and psi. And then you make a model and you hold it in your hand and you start rotating it. And you realize that if the side chain is anything bigger than a proton, and as you turn it 360 degrees, there are angles, phi psi angles, in which the side chains come too close. They either clash, or even if they are coming close, they are energetically unfavorable because they repel each other. Whereas for a polyglycine stretch, since there's no, there isn't a bulky amino acid, it's just a small proton, the degree of flex flexibility is very high. You can move, you can change the torsion angles phi and psi into many, many different combinations in phi psi space, which relates to actual turning of these torsional angles in your models. So glycine is the only amino acid where if you have four glycine uh, uh, peptide, you can move the phi psi quite a lot around 360 degrees, which is shown by the map on the left. But the moment you put even a single CH3 group over there, which is an alanine, the amount of rotation you can do is heavily restricted. And it is even more heavily restricted, the bulkier the, the side chain. And proline, which I'm showing on the right hand side, is even more restricted than any other amino acid. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Sir, uh, when you talk about proline being even more restricted than any other, is that the reason why, you know, instead of having dots for your 2D Ramachandra map, it has spirals? No, so I'm sorry, uh, getting, uh, getting the right picture is 
not very easy. Uh, there are multiple representations of a Ramachandran map. Uh, so, for example, if you look over here, right, you will see that the dots genuinely represent a pair of phi's and psi's, which is basically one amino acid in a polypeptide chain in a structure which has always been already been sorted. You'll notice that even though this part and this part is completely black, okay, there are dots in these gray areas. That's because modern uh, ideas relate not to two physical atoms banging against each other but about the energy uh, uh, but it's it's related to the relates to the fact that if you bring uh, two atoms for example two ch3s too close to each other since they don't bond to each other they repel each other and because of this repulsion these light gray areas over here and the light gray areas over here can also have uh, is are also occupied in phi size space, but they are statistically unfavorable. Okay, much of the favorable spaces are the blue spaces over here and the black spaces over here, but the other spaces are possible but statistically unfavorable. So, for example, if you if you look at a dot over here, that is in all probability a glycine. If you look at a dot over here, that's in all probability a glycine. So, glycines can come in the so-called unfavorable zones, but Tryptophan cannot, it's too bulky a residue. And proline cannot be on the right hand side of the Ramachandran plot at all because it's restricted due to a covalent bond between the side chain and the main chain. Is that clear enough? So mm -hmm. I've been showing you dot plots, I've been showing you classical representations of Ramachandran plot, and I've been showing you energy diagrams. This is an energy diagram over here, but they all conceptually are the same thing. Thank you. Okay. Sir, so where the contours are uh, close together, can we say that the favorability of uh, protein being uh, the amino acid being there is more? Yes. So, for example, highest possibility of the amino acid in structures when you plot them are is here. These are the two spots where the densest dots will be there if you plot. The ones outside are less favorable, means less chance they are there. And this part is very rare. Very few proteins will have will have will occupy a phi size space in this area. And of course, nothing here, nothing here, nothing here, and nothing here. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Sir, how do we define positive and negative phi and psi? Like these atoms a, to be defined. It's a 360 degree rotation. So if you have a if you have a let's just take this is not the best representation. Take a carbon carbon. I'm calling this X, I'm calling this Y, right? So this carbon carbon can rotate 360 degrees. That 360 degrees, sorry, doesn't look like 360 degrees. Let me try again, 360. Okay, so this rotation can be 360 degrees. And all phi and psi representation is, is representing is a 360 degree rotation around a bond, which as defined over here, let me go back. So here are the uh, phi bond. So this is the phi rotation. This is the psi rotation. This is the omega rotation. All of them can rotate 360 degrees. Omega most of the time, almost always stays at 180 degrees. Okay, whereas the phi and psi in theory can rotate from zero to 360 degrees, which is pretty much what the Ramachandra map is showing you. However, even though it can rotate, it turns out it cannot actually take certain uh, positions. And the reason it cannot take uh, certain positions is the R group of amino acid one clashes with the R group of amino acid two. And because of this, even though theoretically the bond can rotate 360 degrees, practically in protein structures, there are limited phi psi locations where you find, uh, well, where you find the phi psi for each residue. And because of this limited uh, uh, restriction in terms of where phi size can be, proteins tend to fold in certain structured manner, alpha helices, beta sheets, and so on and so forth. Okay, sir. Sir, uh, can we say that in the graph, uh, the scattered dots are uh, probability of glycines? The scatter plots are what? The scattered dots which are in the open space are of glycine. Yes, 
So these should be glycines. Either th there should be glycines or there is something very strange happening in that local area. So for example, if you have an amino acid in the active site of hemoglobin, okay, there is a possibility, I'm not saying it happens. There's a possibility of because it is interacting, that main chain is interacting with uh, ion atom, that there may be a little bit of uh, torsion or twist over there, which causes it to take what are defined as unfavorable conformations. Okay, so they can be special cases, but 99% this is glycine. Okay, sir. Yeah, sir. Uh, when we say that we are plotting a phi uh, graph of a protein, we mean to say that every uh, that uh, four we are in the, the protein chain, we are taking every possible four combination of that uh, atoms and we are plotting the phi and psi for. Like, okay, if I get phi and psi zero, zero, I'm plotting that. And then I go to the next four uh, chain and then I'm plotting again a phi and psi. So are we plotting that like for the entire protein or? Exactly. So not only are we packing, uh, plotting it for an entire protein, we are also plotting it for all the one lakh proteins which are there in the protein data bank. We can, and which is what this is showing you. If you look at this very densely crowded picture, right? There are thousands and thousands of proteins over here. So what so you're saying is complete. all the proteins are so over prote here. Yeah, go ahead, please. So are you yeah, talking about proteins or amino acids? Like all the amino acids of your triple helix of chain, no? All the amino acids in a protein are being plotted over here. Huh. So uh, is everybody facing problems in understanding this concept? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So I don't sir. know why yes, uh, this is complicated. Let's try this again. Let's say that this is a polypeptide chain. Okay, going from N terminal to C terminal, fine. This is alanine over here, which is the, let's say there's a methanine before this. There's a methanine, there's an alanine. Let's say there is another alanine and let's say there is a glycine. So it's just a sequence of amino acids as shown over here. Just a sequence of amino acids. Okay, like this, one, two, three, four, five, six. Now, all we are doing is for every amino acid, Pair. So for a single amino acid ala, you take phi, you measure phi from the atomic structure which you have solved. And just like one of the students said, let's assume that the angle you get is zero. Then you measure phi and again, let's say you get the, atom, you get the angle, the dihedral angle which you measure is zero. All you do is you go to the Ramachandra map, which is over here. And you say zero, zero. So you basically, plot a dot over here, fine. Then you go to the next, uh, uh, next amino acid. Let's say the next amino acid is an, another alanine, but uh, the, it is phi is minus 90 and the psi is plus 90. So you plot a dot over here. Then the next amino acid. So you keep on doing that. So for uh, any protein, when you keep on plotting the dots, as you grow from amino acid to amino acid using the structural model, you find that all these dots almost always are in the regions defined by the Ramachandra map. It is a restricted region and it does not go beyond these regions. And remember, omega is always going to be 180 degrees. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Okay. Think about this. Yes, sir. Could you please go to the page where you saw, uh, showed the glycine Ramachandra map? Yeah. Yeah, is there any significance of the symmetry in that? Like about the, like Y is equal to minus X line. There's a symmetry, right? In yes. the second and fourth quarter. So remember you are just looking at a two dimensional representation of what is basically a rotation in a, uh, around a bond. And the rotation around a bond is basically 360 degrees. So it's telling you that the white regions are not going to be energetically favorable. So you are not going to have even a glycine at zero phi and zero psi. Yes, I got that part, but uh, unlike all other graphs, this is symmetric. So it, is freely it, it can freely rotate without any problems in phi psi space because the proton as a side chain does not restrict mm -hmm. anything. Okay. Huh? Then why does it still have some limitations? So, so remember, look at the dark blue as more favorable, light green as possible, but unfavorable and the white as probably not. 
yeah okay oh, okay okay so 0 comma 0 is like a fully ex- eclipsed combination yes. type the chances of getting a 0 0 in a protein structure is zero effectively mm, okay yeah. understood sir 